I really, really think that Halo Reach MCC on PC is misunderstood. And we're going to talk about why. And this is a going to be a weird video because I'm, <laughs> it's like 1 a.m. at this point and I've had a very long week and I'm very stressed with CES 2020 coming up and a lot of work that I have to do for that. But I told myself I'd talk about video games more and more as I can. So I'm Meeples Vox. And welcome to my retro room. I'm actually trying out a new camera lens combination that I'd like to stick with for this setup. And I think the result is actually a lot better. You can let me know what you think in the comment section down below. It's also got autofocus. To quickly establish context, I did play Reach when it originally came out. I was in my ju late junior year of high school at the time. It came out. I... I think I skipped school the first day it came out. I beat the campaign basically straight through as quickly as I could. And I even competed professionally in it. I actually competed in a day one tournament the day it came out and didn't do so hot. But I did compete quite a lot during the Halo Reach days. Halo 3 was my jam and will always be my favorite. But Halo Reach was something I poured years of my life into. Even up past Halo 4's release and up to Halo 4's release, I even hosted a Control Freak sponsored Halo Reach tournament where I gave out a copy of Halo 4. And that's where I really met a lot of my current, you know, Halo friends such as Blizzard Ball, Diddy, things like that people like that rather uh and played a lot with my good buddy bbk dragoon and i even some of my first videos over on my main channel were halo reach tips videos because that game was just very important to me so seeing it re-released on the xbox one 4k 60 fps is a dream come true getting it on pc 4k 60 fps mouse and keyboard and ultra wide support has just been mm, unbelievable but there's been a lot of drama about it and a lot of like pushback against some of its core mechanics which has me scratching my head a little confused as to what the heck is going on so there is a lot of debate to be had regarding the idea of altering a game that you are basically remastering because that's all mcc is to me it is something that is supposed to leave the original games alone it is you are touching them up modernizing them making them more playable and tolerable in the current day because if you ever played the backwards compatible version of halo reach has a lot of issues. The weird ghosting that happens due to the we the way the motion blur is being interpolated. The frame rate was really bad when it initially released. There's a lot of issues with it. It's not a great experience. But you can go back on 360 and still play it. But of course, there's netcode issues, and they actually took all of the metadata servers offline. I made a video on that last year or a year before that. At this point, I don't remember. That was pretty sad. So we lost all of our stats, and I went and took screenshots of everything, everything, because that was disappointing. But I don't know, man. I, To me, MCC is supposed to be the preservation collection. It is supposed to be, here's all the original games. You can now play them going forward. You have the whole legacy of Halo and Master Chief, even though Reach didn't really have Master Chief in it at the forefront, uh, at your disposal, so that Halo will be playable for the foreseeable future on Xbox, Xbox One X, Scarlet, or uh, Series X at this point, yada yada. So seeing a lot of people talk and essentially demand a lot of change for a game that released nearly 10 years ago at this point is really concerning to me because I wanted it preserved. I just want it a little bit more playable in the modern era. I didn't want it to be changed. And I really think that kind of violates the point of MCC for me. But the reasons that people are kind of wanting it to be changed or updated or patched or fixed or whatever, I think are actually misguided and why I think it's misunderstood. So overall, my thoughts on Halo Reach has been mostly positive. I've been super stoked on it. I've had a blast with it. I've also had my share of frustration with it, and that comes down to a couple key points we'll talk about in a minute. But at no point has my frustration come down to me thinking that someone I'm playing against is using a controller and having a better advantage than I am. In fact, I play with friends who play on controller, and in some situations, they perform better than I do. In other situations, I perform better than they do, on mouse and keyboard and in fact i've gone back and forth and tried to see because i was going to be open and play with whichever control scheme i preferred in this game and despite the fact that i still have issues adjusting to the controls i do feel better overall on mouse and keyboard and that is actually because we're not playing on the 360 controllers with the 360 control scheme and even if you hook up a 360 controller now it's not interpreting it the same way as the 360 game was instead it's based on the xbox one controller which I've actually made a lot of videos about how frustrated I am with the Xbox One controller, because to me, 
it's quite a jarring difference going between 360 first person shooters and that controller and the Xbox One. They've actually made a lot of improvements over the years to fix that and adjust that. Like my original Xbox One, the Halo 5 edition, I uh, had controller like desync issues and the inputs weren't going right. My new Xbox One X does, with the new Air controller does not have that issue. I do keep running into an issue which I thought was desync related where I go to shoot and instead I melee. And that's because the way that the bumper contours down on the controller, I literally, I physically cannot hold my finger on the trigger in any way where that corner, that little contoured corner bit is not being grazed by my finger and thus accidentally hit. It seems like a really bizarre design flaw. Anyway, the way that the thumbsticks and sensitivity and looking are all interpreted are very different than how that was on the 360 apparently. And this has apparently been a big issue for 343 specifically to recreate that in the Master Chief collection as they've had to do a lot of work to rework how looking and sensitivity works. There was a whole lot of posts about it back in the day. There was a video on BBK Dragoon's channel about it. I'll try to post the link to it in the description below. But the way the dead zones are created, the way acceleration is handled, and the way diagonal acceleration is handled are all different, and it feels very wrong to me. Now, probably a year ago now, if not longer at this point, they added an update to MCC, which added a new modern looking system for the Xbox One controllers. And that alleviated a lot. I was immediately a lot more comfortable on it. I still don't think it's the same experience, but I was immediately a lot more comfortable with that experience on the Xbox One controller than I was before. But that's just for Halo Master Chief Collection. It's not for all of the other games. So for example, if I go back and try to play Call of Duty Black Ops, for example, on Xbox One X backwards compatibility, I feel like it's borderline unplayable because of how weird the sensitivity and the looking translates into that game. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's really frustrating. All that to say, control schemes are kind of very to your liking, and, so, and I have played Halo and have 20 years now, maybe longer? Yeah, 19 to 20, it's about to be 20, 20 years, we're coming up on 20 years, like 19 years of muscle memory of playing Halo with a controller. So I thought that would make me better on controller, but more recently I have spent most of my PC time or my most of my FPS time playing on PC, and so I'm actually much more comfortable on mouse and keyboard. Despite all of the claims of how much better the aim assist than the magnetism with cherry picked examples is better on controller, and to a degree it is. I'm not going to dispute that you know there is magnetism or there is aim assist or that it might be a little strong. I don't feel like that gives anyone that significant of an advantage because at the, the end of the day you're only going to notice that in x percent of players and even certain major streamers who think they're in that percentage of players very clearly aren't because they haven't played Halo a whole heck of a lot <laughs> um you're not really going to encounter that many fights where you're on an even playing field with someone as equally skilled at their control scheme as you are shooting the exact same shots never missing and they win because they have aim assist to their advantage those situations just don't really exist in natural organic gameplay and I think it's way blown out of proportion. Contr controllers do need aim assist on PC. I do think in general that's kind of a requirement for accessibility. I don't think that takes away from its value as a PC game in the slightest and I think people who suggest that are confused or very gatekeepy. I don't really know. It's really strange. But also I did not feel I was any better with it. I feel a lot, and there are a lot of situations, especially long distance fights where you don't have that red reticle, where I actually feel better on mouse and keyboard. Now you do have some awkwardness of it's a little bit more awkward to crouch walk and crouch jump and they had to adjust flinch a little bit, but I really don't think we're going to see that much adjusting of how controllers play. And I really don't think it gives anyone that significant of an advantage. Now, the other big controversy that has come up with it regarding Halo Reach is the DMR on its own. I've seen so much backlash against the DMR as a concept. The DMR should be removed. It shouldn't, you should never play DMR starts. It needs to be nerfed. You need to get rid of Bloom entirely. All of this fundamentally changes the game. And I think it's really problematic. And I think part of the reason that people are super up in arms about how the DMR works has actually to do nothing with the weapon itself but rather the way the game is played at the moment. Because my biggest issue, my deal-breaking issue with Halo Reach on PC and MCC in general right now, which has actually been an issue I've had with Halo 3 and Combat Evolved and pretty much every game in the Master Chief Collection, is the current pool of map and game type combinations that we are playing in the Match Composer is not really at all what most of us ever would have played 
during Halo Reach's actual matchmaking. And I'm actually hoping to soon boot up the 360, put in Halo Reach, maybe I'll do that tonight, and play a few games so I can show you some examples of the game modes that you would actually play, because these are not it. These are not it at all. All right, so just for real quick, look at this beautiful matchmaking menu. You get to choose your playlist, and there's so many playlists. Snipers, SWAT, Team Deathmatch, Living Dead, Invasion. Then you have evolved versions of the playlist. Rumble Pit, Double Team, Super Slayer, Arena. I haven't played the Arena in forever. Actually, I never really played it much back in the day. I'm surprised that I like it now. Then you have Combat Evolved Anniversary on its own. Great. Community, MLG Griffball, and then Cooperative Stuff, Firefight Campaign, and so on. Now, the Match Composer is really great. But there's something about this, especially when you consider that before you start matchmaking, you also get to have search restrictions. Do you prefer skill-based matchmaking or connection-based matchmaking? Where is that? And then you get to choose what kind of teammates you want, even. Pretty freaking cool. It was really phenomenal, and I miss it a lot. Found people really quickly here. I'm quite impressed. Not, not too bad at all, given that this game should be dead at this point, since a better version's available. <laughs> Oh look, we get to vote for maps, and these are map combinations that we actually get. You get DMRs on Uncaged or on Unconquered, or you get to vote for none of the above, or you get Asylum, which here does not have DMRs by default, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab this sniper and see what I can do. Oh boy, the sensitivity feels really weird. I'm only playing on three and it feels way too sensitive. Like I said, the Xbox One controller does not translate to, oh, hello. To 360 games at all it's really strange i am playing on the xbox one back combat i did not have the time to boot up the 360 and download everything and i'm gone all right let's see if we can get a nice little spawn trap going here this is of course the typical i believe it's called sanctuary but on this version it was called asylum where did he go there he is all right uh we're gonna run up here man i just i feel like i can't aim with this this is really frustrating i want to be decent but sometimes it just does not work out that way hello man i missed the sniper i just don't miss these jaggy graphics or the frame rate yeah you're not you're not turning me turning me again come on come on oh, i missed the headshot there we go yeah this, this probably looks fairly smooth in the video just because of how this works but to my mon ooh, to my monitor this is really choppy and just not a great experience host migration because i don't miss that at all dear god why i was uh between <laughs> you know i just played original Ooh, but it made the power weapons respawn can't complain about that anyway i just played the like this vanilla halo reach with bbk not too long before the mcc version released and i didn't have this many you know super big complaints about it but immediately i can tell that i've been spoiled by MCC. The PC version running at ooh, 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 ooh. yeah. PC version running at 60 FPS in high res. All right, and here again, look at these map. This is what I want you to focus on. Look at these map and game type combinations. Non DMR Slayer on Uncaged, DMRs on Countdown, Slayer Pro on Boardwalk, or none of the above. We're gonna vote none of the above and probably get even better game types. And none of these combinations are in the PC version at this point in time. You get, again, non-DMR Slayer on Countdown. You can choose between them pretty much at this point. Slayer Pro on Elil. I don't know what that is. And then we get to vote for DMRs on Uncaged instead of no DMRs on Uncaged. This is perfect. This is exactly what I want to see. DMRs on Uncaged is a game type that I enjoyed, and I've only played Uncaged like a single time on MCC PC. Really weird. Really frustrating. But we get to vote for it. And none of these game type combinations are in the game. It's just DMRs on everything. And then it's assault rifles on maps that I don't want to play assault rifles on. You were not playing CEA maps with DMRs. That doesn't make any sense. All right. So uncaged, even with DMRs, used to be my jam. Let me see if I can pull a sniper from this guy over here. This used to be like the map I grind grinded the most for some reason. There we go. But... It's still a lot of fun, especially when you're the one who grabs the sniper. Although, jetpacks definitely make some of these maps not great. All right, Mr. Rocket Man, no thank you. All right, let's see if I can let me see if I can pull this off. I'm low on shields. These guys aren't even shooting me, but did I just get grenaded by a teammate? Is that what just happened? All right. Uh, let's see if I can make some sniper work. Again, jetpacks are driving me nuts and headshot. 
All right. Oh, hello, teammate. I'm going to try to practice what we call map control in Halo, which a lot of people don't seem to understand, and that I'm not going to run around looking for kills and losing 1v1 battles. Oh, that guy had active camo. Damn. I'm going to simply hold this part of the map and make sure I take out anybody who wants to compete. Ooh, that no scope. And I'm now, now I'm missing. There, there we go with the double. I will say jetpacks really break most of the maps in this game. It's not... This is a map that was designed for like the hardcore playlist where you didn't have as many armor abilities and stuff. And you, you can really see that in a lot of the map design. Again with the jetpacks. I really, with the sensitivity, I can't pull that off. Oh! Well, that's embarrassing, but that stick was hilarious. <laughs> All right, sniper. Oh, teammates. No, 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 no. Hate it when teammates spawn on the weapon I'm going for. All right, one no scope. Can we get the second? No, probably not. I'm not feeling confident in it. That was a waste of a shot. That's fine. He can't land his shots. All right. And where did this other guy come from? Ha, he's dead, but not this one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nope, 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 nope. Really hard to compete with jetpacks, but that's fine. I'm going to stop complaining about them. Shotgun man. What? Hello? My melee lunged and everything. Why didn't it connect? All right. I got the shotgun. Let's. Oh, I got the shotgun. Let's go. Oh, it's out of ammo. Oh, why is it out of ammo? Oh, no. Oh. All right, jetpack man. I'm getting tired of this. Ooh, that guy has the sniper. I want the sniper. I want the sniper. Give me. Oh, there's no sniper ammo. That's fine. See, this is the kind of match I want to play on the regular. Can I land it? I did! The no scope! Oh, man. And take out the jetpack guy, too. Let's just keep this streak going, shall we? What about this jetpack guy? No, no. Not feeling confident about that one. We're gonna... Ooh, I hit that, though. Got the fall kill. Hell yeah. <sighs> yeah. I mean, these aren't matches I'm getting in normal PC reach. Instead, we're getting these really weird amalgamations of maps from Halo 2, Halo 1, and Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, which isn't even in the game for some reason. Why is CEA not here? Where is the CEA playlist? They're in custom games, or at least the maps are, the map variants are. There's no power-ups on the maps either for the matchmaking variants, but the map variants nor the game type variants are in matchmaking for some reason. But we're playing these maps with a stock Halo Reach configuration, which does not make sense. You should never be powering up Battle Creek in matchmaking and starting with DMRs. There shouldn't be DMRs on Battle Creek in the first place. The map is too small. Same thing with Hang 'em High. Hang 'em High with DMR starts? What? It's not what you played in Halo Reach. You started with the assault rifle and the pistol and CEA configuration. And that's what should be happening here. And instead, we're getting shoved into these really weird Forge World and otherwise DLC maps that honestly most of the player base did not spend most of their time on. They're not an enjoyable experience, and the overall combinations are not true to the original game, nor are they really all that fun to play. There are a lot of maps that I literally never played until <laughs> MCC PC, and they're not fun at all. But these seems to be seem to be the most weighted configurations in the match composer. And it's getting really frustrating. Like, this is the deal breaker kind of thing for me. You know, I can deal with the DMRs. I can deal with getting constant teammates where two of my teammates get two kills and the rest of us have to backpack it. I can deal with Bloom. I can deal with Aim Assist. I can't deal with these map and match combinations being so miserable and unenjoyable and not really the experience I was going for because that's not ever what I played during Halo Reach. And this was a complaint I had during the flight was I immediately logged in and I was like, okay, all we can do is play big team battle on these two miserable maps, Tempest and the other one. This is a terrible experience. How am I supposed to play and enjoy stress testing? And there was no opportunity to give feedback about that. It was purely, does it run well? Yeah, it runs fine. It still sucks to play. And that carried over, unfortunately, into the full release. And there's been no word about really tweaking the map pool all that much. They did, thankfully, I am super grateful, they reduced the weight of SWAT Magnums on SWAT because I was getting them every other match, if not mostly SWAT Magnums, and it is, there, there's no excuse to ever play SWAT Magnums. It's a terrible experience. And I have the same issue, and I hope they address it or have addressed it in Halo 3 on MCC, in that I was always getting SWAT Magnums and SWAT guns. It was way too frequent, such a miserable experience. It should only be one of those ones in a blue moon, <laughs> LOL, this game mode kind of things, not something anyone plays seriously. All that to say, 
I think the issue that people have isn't really that the DMR itself is so broken. The DMR is actually a fantastic weapon. It's one of those guns, especially with the needle rifle, where even in title update with reduced bloom, it is meant to be the gun that you start with. It is meant to be the gun that really kind of, I don't know, uh, <laughs> does it all for you. It is just like kind of the BR was. It's supposed to be the best gun that you start with. You were supposed to start with it and always have a solid option at any range to fight. It's supposed to be something that if you are good enough with pacing your shots and you know targeting them correctly, I hear people saying, well, what if we had to lead our shots more in reach? Reach isn't projectile like Halo 3. Reach is hit scan. It doesn't work. <laughs> but it's one of those guns where if you're good enough and pace your shots and can land them consistently enough, you can do some crazy long range damage. If you're quick enough and reactive enough, you can do some close up damage. Otherwise, it's a good mid range dominant gun. However, equally, if you're struggling with it, it is super awkward up close with the bloom and with the, you know, the distance it's meant to be shot. It is super awkward to get into a really up close quarters fight with. It's also super annoying if you're missing all of your shots to quickly get outshot by literally anyone else with a different gun at long range. And in fact, it's funny because one of my number one tips for anyone wanting to succeed in Halo Reach is to use a gun other than the DMR. Like, keep the DMR on you. It's supposed to always, you know, be on you, that or the needle rifle, so that you never have an excuse of you didn't have the right gun for a gunfight because it's good all around. But really, especially if you're like me who likes to play up close and personal, the best thing you can do for yourself is go pick up another gun. Use the assault rifle. Use the concussion rifle. The needler. The needle rifle. The sniper. You know, picking up all of these other guns, people don't, people don't really expect to be shot by those things as much, and you generally as long as you're good, have an advantage at close ranges or different ranges depending on the gun that you have because of those things. The needle rifle has an advantage over the DMR at range and mid-range, and theoretically up close if you're good enough with it. Due to no bloom, you can sit there and spam it a little bit more. The DMR can kind of beat it up close a little bit just because of the way that it works. Needler at mid-range with tracking if they're not getting the first shot on you, you could theoretically get a needle explosion on them, be fine. Assault rifle can really pepper them up first and if, up front, and if you are making them miss their shots, then you're probably going to beat them. Concussion rifle is going to de-scope them and bump them in the air and give you a bigger opportunity to land shots. The sniper rifle, as long as you're not getting de-scoped too hard, you can take them out in one or two shots. It's pretty much always countered, but can also counter everything else depending on your gun and i really don't think it's that imbalanced the problem circling back to what i was connecting this to is the maps you play them on you're playing the dmr on maps that were never meant for the dmr you're playing them on tiny ass maps meant for assault rifles or shotguns that barely reach five feet in front of you at times not the maps that it was meant to be played on and so i really think that people's kind of criticisms of reach are a little bit misplaced because they think that the weapons or the bloom or the aim assist are the problems when a lot of the problems come down to the way we're being made to play the game isn't how Reach was actually built for, nor how any of us have muscle memory for. Now, I will say, when it comes to aim assist, I concede that in the hardcore zero bloom no sprint playlist, if if enough of the actual pro community think it's, thinks it's worth turning off aim assist in that specific playlist, it makes sense. I overall don't understand the idea of splitting up, you know, settings across all playlists because then it's way more difficult to actually practice those things when you're limited to a specific environment. But I do concede that if the pro community together, you know, almost unanimously decides that that's what should be done, it would be a reasonable thing to do isolated to that playlist. Removing aim assist across the whole game, big nope. I will say that if you're with the squad and you are frustrated by some of these mechanics of, of reach, you're gonna have a really good time in hardcore no bloom no sprint playlist because it is a real good time and accomplishes most of what you know those complaints are about a big thing that people always forget with halo is that it's not a one player you know one man army slaying game it's not an arcade shooter it's not a battle royale game it's not call of duty and this is actually why i'm so inconsistent my my irl buddy that i've played with for almost my entire life always gives me crap because i can go like 50 and 0 backpacking the whole team one game to barely getting five kills the next game, and that comes down to the way that I mesh with a team because I am very lone wolf oriented. It's why I enjoy games like the classic Call of Duty games where I can just run off on my own, and as long as I have the reaction time, the map knowledge, the muscle memory, and you know, the skills, the gunplay, I can beat everybody. Halo was not that game. 
Halo is the game where if you're not doing team shooting and holding map positions and things like that, you're literally playing it wrong and you are going to lose. And a lot of people are coming into this either forgetting that or just being more experienced with other, you know, Halo hasn't really released in a while. So other more recent shooters that are more individual based, they come into this and and, you know, I've been seeing this since Call of Duty 4 versus Halo 3, when people who played a lot of Call of Duty come in and join and play Halo, and they're like, oh, this sucks, I can't kill anybody, and they have the same complaints that certain streamers have been making, because they're literally playing the game wrong. And it's not me dictating how you should play a game, it's the game dictating how you should play a game. When you can't just run around and murder everyone on your own, because that's not how the game, you know, it's not what the sandbox is built for, and it doesn't allow you to succeed in that way, the game's trying to tell you, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I will say, as someone who played Halo for nearly 20 years now on controller, and then moving back to PC, you can tell immediately that the aim assist kind of affected my muscle memory as well. And this is one of those things where back in Halo 3 and Halo Reach days, I did actually complain about how strong the aim assist was, even on console. And this was because it was affecting my movement. All of those clips people have of, you know, their aim being dragged by someone's head, when I played at 10 sensitivity, which no one should play on, but I was playing at 10 sensitivity trying to be the ultimate, you know, aiming control person and, you know, trying to be a boss like that, the aim assist would actually drag me away from where I was trying to aim and it would be frustrating at various points in time. And going into PC here, I actually find, despite the fact that I'm using a different control scheme, my muscle memory is affected quite a bit in that I am pacing how much damage I do or where exactly around a person I am flicking my shots, expecting it to kind of gravitate towards them and finish them off. And I'm losing a lot of gunfights for it. Like the way that I flick shot snipers, because I, I used to just no scope constantly back in the day, and it's still very enjoyable on mouse, but it works a little differently. And how I expected, you know, my final headshot, you know, upper area shot of my DMR to work, I'm missing because I'm just getting it like halfway there because I got so trained to that, that I'm now missing it. So if anything, aim assist kind of teaches you bad habits more than it really gives you an advantage. But I just wanted to share some stuff. I really think that, I don't know. It's one of those things where I think that the Halo MCC Reach PC release shows that it's not just nostalgia based. I really do enjoy my time and I've enjoyed the 30 or something hours I've put into Reach so far more than I have enjoyed a lot of modern shooters that have come out recently. It took me a long time to get used to modern, the new Modern Warfare. Meanwhile, I can still go back and play the original Modern Warfare, the PC modded Modern Warfare 2, or the Modern Warfare Remastered from 2007 and 2016 respectively, uh, and still enjoy them to this day, at which point it's not really nostalgia, I just genuinely, genuinely enjoy the way these games worked more than I do the new ones. I've enjoyed my time in Halo Reach more than I ever did any time in Halo 5. That's not nostalgia. That's me genuinely enjoying it right now more than I liked the other thing. And I just, I think a lot of people have so much going on and looped in here. And there's so many modern, you know, gaming trends that people are expecting to impact Halo Reach. And it's, I, I don't think it should happen, but I really at, at its core think that Halo Reach is misunderstood. And I wanted to share some thoughts on that. This has been a very lengthy video. I do agree that the current battle pass system makes little sense. It looks like it was thrown together last minute. You unlock points from this battle pass, but then you just unlock everything one by one by one. And this continues this bizarre trend in gaming these days, where instead of just unlocking something and then having it, you unlock a point to then unlock the thing, then you have to unlock the thing, and then you can use the thing. Whereas before, you just unlocked the thing and you had the thing. Now there's like five extra steps for literally no reason and it makes no sense. And there's no point in unlocking points in order to unlock the things when we're still limited on what we unlock instead of the credits where we can pick and choose like we used to. But that and the maps are my only real complaints. Otherwise, it's Halo Reach. It's what I played in 2010, it's what I played in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, until I got an Xbox One and couldn't really go back to the poor frame rates and tolerate it that much anymore. And it's what I'll keep playing, assuming they fix the maps. I'm Eagles Fox. I'll see you next time.